scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Spirit can move you to begin a session of prayer either because of your own personal positioning or the alignment of the audience that will be receiving from you. You must be sensitive. Preparing a sermon is only a minute fraction as far as the ministry of the word is concerned hallelujah father help us this morning yet again you have brought words with power through your servants even this morning speak to us in jesus mighty name i pray hallelujah i i really want to charge particularly the membership of this church and i hope and pray that you would grow to appreciate the kind and the level of spiritual investment that is happening through these conferences year after year. I submit to you that it takes a lot of discernment, influence, resources, and capacity to be able to pull together ministers of the gospel that have been marvelously helped of God and by God, especially at the beginning of the year and i think is worthy of commendation and salutation especially to your pastor thank you sir thank you hallelujah so for this session i didn't know that pastor was going to speak about tonight i sensed in my spirit while i was praying this morning that there would be a mighty outpouring this night a mighty there will be activations of graces and it's like positionings there are realms and dimensions people would be strategically positioned in the spirit hallelujah and so don't don't be casual coming early is wonderful but you must come prepared hallelujah thank you jesus I'm teaching very briefly this morning and then we'll pray in addition to that which you have received on the pattern for growth and stature. The pattern for growth and stature. Again, I, I pray that we pay attention and listen very carefully. It takes attentiveness to the spirit. The Bible says they told him look on us and he looked at them expecting to receive expecting to receive God is a God of patterns please look up God is a God of patterns and usually continuity in the spirit and in the kingdom is based on the capture of the patterns that are responsible for certain occurrences you read from the book of Genesis chapter 1 that everything God created, he didn't have to create it the second time again. Are, are we together now? That every time he would create something, he would weave within that creation a pattern for the continuity of that process. So if you wanted to see a repetition of certain things, all you needed to do was to capture the pattern. In architecture, if I want to reproduce this structure right now, say in London or in, in Abuja or in, in um, 
you know you care anywhere i don't need to come and carry the building in fact i do not even need to be here physically is that true what i need is the pattern the pattern can with exactitude and precision grant me the understanding architecturally speaking to reproduce this structure to an extent that if you were blindfolded and carried away to the other structure and they open you up you would not even know you are transited that is how powerful and predictable patterns are leviticals chapter 9 and verse 6 the glory the manifestation of the glory of god upon the life of an individual is dependent on our ability to walk in keeping with divine patterns here's what he told moses 9 6 leviticals this is the thing he says which the lord commanded that ye should do and the glory of the lord shall appear unto you that means the glory would not just come because you desire to come it responds to certain things that you need to do hallelujah so there are patterns that are allotted for certain spiritual occurrences for instance you can verify if a believer has been saved by asking him what pattern he followed is that true because according to romans chapter 10 from verse 8 down to 10 and then extends to 15 the bible says the pattern for the administration of the life of god into the spirit of a believer is that you must believe with your heart the lord jesus am i right on that and then that with your mouth confession is made even unto salvation that is the pattern that with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation when it has to do with the healing of bodies and all of that the pattern is that number one there has to be the hearing of faith is that true yes the hearing of faith in partnership with the anointing is what would produce that outcome. So, all of the outcomes that we desire in our lives, we, we are helped by God to achieve those desires by the revelation of the patterns that control those results. Church growth has a pattern. Financial prosperity has a spiritual pattern. Are we together? So your maturity in the spirit is not just measured by your longevity in church, but your ability to have through the ministry of the spirit and a teaching priest access the various patterns that control the outcomes of your life. You gain mastery in spiritual things to the degree to which you have pieced together these patterns. Now you can become a blessing because with a doctor's level of precision, when you see someone, you know what pattern they are missing. Immediately, without ambiguity, you can tell them, this is what you are missing. When Satan came to attack Peter, Jesus knew what to do. He rebuked him and he said, Peter, Satan had desired to shift you like wheat, but the pattern for your deliverance is i have prayed for you so every time believers are afflicted the pattern that is responsible connected to that deliverance is prayer james 5 13 is anyone afflicted he says let him pray are we learning now yeah so it's important for us to understand spiritual patterns and this morning very briefly we want to consider the pattern what spiritual pattern is responsible for growth and stature in the spirit what do i need to engage to evolve into superior spiritual dimensions because it looks like many believers struggle with the subject of growth and maturity and stature in the spirit and sadly many have been around you know the house of god for many years but you cannot based on the biblical indices that measure maturity you cannot say they have attained unto maturity and galatians 4 says an heir for as long as that heir is a child he says he differed not from a servant or a slave are we blessed there is a pathway that if and when you follow the result is that you must be matured 
you will be a person of stature in the spirit and like we always discuss there are certain dimensions of your spiritual inheritance you cannot be given until your maturity matches the level to which you are able to manage that gift the same way a responsible parent would not give a child of 10 years old or five years old car keys not because you do not love the child his level of maturity cannot support that blessing so we are unable to walk in certain levels of authority in the spirit experientially we keep reading in the bible that we should walk in those levels but experientially speaking we are unable to because it takes touch up to receive certain mantles it takes touch up to walk in certain levels of the anointing if you're with me please say amen, amen. hallelujah let's go to acts chapter 6 and from verse 1 to 4 the early church is a template for us to be able to follow the bible says and in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied there arose a murmuring of the grecians against the hebrews why because their widows were neglected in the daily ministrations we're reading to four verse two then the twelve called the multitudes of the disciples unto them and said it is not reason that we should leave the word of god and serve tables what level of focus and discipline and diligence this already i can stop in verse two and that can be a message for men of god be careful with growth growth is able to distract you from what brought the growth in the first place legitimately so it is not only sin that distracts men results can distract here is multiplication happening and they are telling them listen you need to pause what you are doing and manage a situation here but they said listen 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 we we are not going to be distracted we will set up a system to protect our focus verse 3 Give us verse 3, we're still here. He says, Wherefore, brethren, look ye among you, seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Can you imagine the requirement in the Bible for being in the welfare department? How in the world do you make this kind of laborious requirement to serve tables? You need a discernment, wisdom, full of honest report of course honest report you are serving people i understand honest reports but full of the holy ghost and wisdom whom we may appoint over this business but we this is the pattern it was given to us by jesus himself if we are desirous of growth and continuity he says but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word pay attention now here the apostles reveal a very powerful secret that was behind their level of growth and maturity did you know that all through their time with jesus this was all that happened prayer and the ministry of the word prayer and the ministry of the word prayer and the ministry of the word it transited these gentlemen from timid confused some visionless men into mighty apostles of the lamb he called them to be with him and while they were with him he introduced a spiritual pattern now the apostles had kept this pattern the ministry of the word and prayer are we learning already but then i hope that god will help me to be able to bridge a very serious gap pastor i believe that is widening in the body of christ and creating sub lopsidedness and imbalance knowing then that the ministry of the word and of prayer are the principal patterns that have been given to the believer for growth it seemed like something happened through history that diverged people to to choose the ministry of the word or prayer are we together now so the dichotomy has been created between the prayer ministry and then the word ministry 
so we have classically speaking and now I'm, I'm speaking from a standpoint of love and this to the body of christ we have people who would want to brand themselves as prayer people and that is wonderful and profitable then we have those who would want to brand themselves as word people and this has created a lot of confusion because both sides have results now if one side is completely failing it becomes obvious that you are missing something it is difficult to correct a person that has results you see failure provokes change it breaks your pride and humbles you you come to a point where you acknowledge that truly i need help but how do you help a person who has results you find that in acts chapter 18 from verse 24 the bible speaks about a very intelligent man called apollos of alexandria please give it to us the bible says this man was an eloquent man look at the credentials of this man he was mighty in scripture the bible says he came to ephesus we're reading to 28 the next verse he was instructed in the way of the lord so he submitted himself to mentorship the bible says he was fervent in spirit and he spake and taught diligently the things of the lord what more would you require from a man but he knew only knowing only you can have all of this and yet know only fervent in spirit mentored built knowing only 26 the bible says he began to speak boldly in the synagogue one day two strange people were in his conference i'm telling you i learned this early ministry you must be aware that you are not impressing everybody there are while you are ministering the word there are people standing from an elevated altitude in the spirit just because they are listening to you does not mean they are helpless there are people who this is what happened in this case please give us that scripture this guy was ministering shouting preaching with fire like i'm doing now and there were two strange people in that conference they sat quietly listening to the only that he knew aquila and priscilla the bible says when they heard him they commended him i like them they didn't discourage him but then they took him unto them and read with me expounded unto him the way of god more perfectly more perfectly the danger of knowing only this is the reason why we must brace ourselves with humility i have profound regard and respect especially for great people whose hearts are open to learn i am very vocal when i find things i do not know i'm very i don't i don't tolerate ignorance in my life my heart is ever open to learn because god gave me this revelation and it brought me deliverance sometimes you can be so vibrant but knowing only could this have been a message for someone thank god for what you have seen but could it be that you know only so let this year be the year that god will bring prophetic midwives listen to what i'm telling you like aquila and priscilla who would help you and expound to you the way of the lord more perfectly let's go back to our discussion so i was talking about the dichotomy there has been supposedly one group that places an emphasis on prayer and all the supporting spiritual exercises that come with prayer like fasting and some other things but may seem to subliminally or even vocally downplay the ministry of the word then respectfully speaking on on the other hand we have people who exalt the word they demonstrate clearly the supremacy of the word and may seem to not pay attention to the ministry of prayer and all the supporting spiritual exercises that accompany prayer hallelujah and you see all these sites have their consequences the key is to study jesus i told us yesterday that there are four biblical channels for knowing god let me recap number one i said scripture the holy scripture is one of the biblical pathways 
by which we know God. Is that true? Number two is the names of God. The names of God are a capture of the various dimensions of him that were revealed to men. Every time God revealed new dimensions of himself, it will be captured in a name so that when you want to see that dimension, you study the revelation behind that name. The third way we know God is through the revelation of Jesus. The Bible calls him the express image of the invisible God. And then number four, like Job taught us, is experience. I have heard with the hearing of the ear, but now my eye seeth thee. So let's study Jesus for a few minutes and let's see how Jesus brings with precision the balance between the ministry of prayer and of the word. Is someone learning? In the book of Luke chapter 2, I'll begin my reading from 41. Luke 2, 41. It's a long reading. Please be patient. This is teenager Jesus now in the flesh. The Bible says now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. Uh -huh. When he was 12 years old, the Bible says they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. Next verse. And when they had fulfilled the days, they returned. The child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey. And when they sought among him, among the acquaintances, they did not find him, 45. The Bible says, when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. There's a reason why I started from there. The Bible says, and it came to pass, after three days, they found him where? In the temple. Everybody say the word. So we see from the life of Jesus, his passion to stay, to learn, to grow. Did you know that many of the things he was learning, his coming was even to abolish some of them. And yet, even as the word incarnate, he submitted himself to that learning. Please give us that scripture. Let's finish up. They found him sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. Next verse. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dwelt with, dealt with us? Behold, thy father has sought thee sorrowing. All right? And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? Two more verses. And they understood not the sayings which he spake. The Bible says, and he went down to them with, to Nazareth. And now verse 52, the verse that we know. And Jesus increased. Usually this is where we read. But we do not know how he increased. I took that journey to show you that he did not increase just because he was the son of God. He submitted himself to learning and to doctrine. So we see his respect for prayer to the extent that he... It was even affecting his relationship with his parents in the flesh. He was that determined and he called that his father's business. Mark chapter 1. We'll read from verse 21 to 28. Mark chapter 1. Watch this now. This is Jesus. And they went to Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue. Verse, next verse. And they were astonished at his doctrine. Everybody say doctrine. One more time, please say doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying let us alone what have we to do with thee jesus so you see that jesus grew in the word had doctrine with proof because exousia the word that is translated authority is derived from the strength of your understanding of the word there are four words that are used to express power and authority two of them are largely known in the body of christ dunamis and 
exousia exousia is a product of your the depth of your comprehending the ways and the principles of god it translates to authority it legitimizes your ability to now stand in the office of the christ and to administer authority are we together i hope you know that authority is what gives legitimate ground for the use of power you can have power but authority is what makes the administration of power legitimate hallelujah you can have a gun that is power but one person can shoot it and will clap for him that is authority another person can shoot it and end up in jail are we together now yeah it's not enough to have power you must have authority and that comes by growth it comes through your comprehending the word let's finish that scripture please verse 25 now very quickly and Jesus rebuked him saying, hold your peace, come out of him. Next verse. And when the unclean spirit had turned him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. What was the result? The Bible says they were all amazed in that they questioned among themselves saying, what thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority, they acknowledged the authority that came from the word. Commanded he even the unclean spirit and they do obey him and immediately on account of the word his fame spread abroad to all the regions please jump to verse 32 for sake of time i want you to follow patiently i'm trying to establish jesus as the pattern that brings the balance of prayer and the ministry of the word now we have seen the ministry of the word in his life and the corresponding results that followed the bible says verse 32 and at evening when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils. Uh -huh. And all the city was gathered together at the door. He healed many who were sick of diverse diseases, casting out many devils, and he suffered not them to speak. Verse 35. The Bible says, and in the morning, with such phenomenal results, and in the morning many of us would not go back to the ministry of prayer again i took time to detail these results from the dexterity of his 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 communication of doctrine to the results the miracles manifestation of authority healing signs and wonders now the bible says that while it was early in the morning rising up a great while before day please help me he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed and there prayed and there prayed so he was not just sound in doctrine we see his commitment and his discipline to the ministry of prayer is someone learning Matthew chapter 4 probably gives the most, in my opinion, the most intelligent theological defense that attempts to bridge the gap between the dichotomy that has been created between the ministry of prayer and the ministry of the word. I repeat that for many people, um, because of the results that come from the ministry of the word, we may not seem to immediately see the necessity for a rich and a robust prayer life not as a system of managing emergencies but as a lifestyle and then for people who are inclined to prayer because of the spiritual blessings that come from the place of prayer they might not need to endure sound doctrine to now learn because you see it takes time to be matured by the word you can pray in one hour you can't grow in the word in one hour it will take time the bible talks about men enduring sound doctrine are we together so let's look at matthew chapter 4 please again i request that you pay attention just lend me your attention and let's patiently understand something as we pray matthew 4 verse 1 this is what we call the temptation of jesus follow closely then jesus was led up of the spirit into the wilderness so we see the ministry of the spirit at work in the life of this jesus 
were not in doubt as to his submission to the ministry of the spirit the next verse please verse 2 the bible says when he had fasted of course that went with prayer 40 days and 40 nights afterwards he was hungry so we see that he went to the wilderness by the leadership of the spirit we see that he got to the wilderness he prayed and fasted 40 days you know the level of spiritual stamina it takes to stretch like that we're not talking of fasting and breaking in the night 40 days 40 nights as much as we know we did not see any food or anything there given to him now when that was done verse 3 when the tempter came my god may god open your eyes to see something here now when the tempter came the tempter met the man who had the word and prayer the tempter met the man who had the word and prayer the tempter met the man who had the word and prayer watch this and he said to him if thou be the son of god command these stones that they be made bread look at the reply of jesus everybody please read with me but he answered and said it is stop did he say i prayed did he say i fasted what was his answer but what was he doing in the wilderness prayer and fasting you thought that when he met the devil he would say are you in fact shouldn't you be afraid that the prayer and fasting of jesus brought satan closer to him hmm. <laughs> You would think that after praying and fasting for 40 days led by the spirit should satan be able to stand such a man i leave it to you to use your mind the make believe that just because you are praying and fasting arbitrarily satan will run away is just a consolation believe me and I know what I'm saying. This is Jesus, except you don't believe the Bible. Jesus, the word incarnate, immersed himself in the word, now prayed, not before the prayer, not during. He was done praying 40 days with fasting and Satan shows up. No shaking, no falling, no fear. And he says, you are hungry. Don't deny it. You are hungry. He's talking to Jesus and he's saying, use the power you have gotten from your prayer and fasting. Turn stone to bread. And Jesus looked at him and said, it is written. Please look up. If Jesus had prayer and did not have the word, he will fall over that temptation the same way someone who did not pray and fast for 40 days. His not knowing scripture would have aborted the potency of his fasting and prayer. If you were to raise Jesus who had spent time praying and fasting and someone who did not even pray, both of them would have fallen over the same temptation. His basis for security was it is written. Please give us that scripture. First temptation, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Now look at Satan. You see, Satan is every other thing but foolish. Don't add foolishness to your description of Satan. You'll be wrong. Hallelujah. The devil took him to a holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if thou be the son of God, now watch this. The ministry of prayer is about to come in now. Satan said, oh, I see that you are grounded in the word. So let's go to it. It is written now. For it is, did Satan also say it is written? So if all that Jesus had was it is written without discernment, he would fall like a pack of cards. The moment he demonstrated supremacy to the world, Satan also switched. That means I will not make my temptation so obvious. I will use things that are scriptural. So I took you to a holy temple. Since I spoke about carnal things, your belly, now I see you are spiritual. Let's talk about spiritual things. I also know it is written. This is where the discernment and the stamina that comes from prayer now helps you to survive. Is someone learning now? Please give it to us. It is written, he shall keep his angels. Look at the accuracy of quoting this scripture. 
he shall keep his angels charge over you you see let me tell you the truth can also destroy just because it is the truth does not mean it will bless you the truth must be rightly divided and accurately communicated this statement you see watch this now was not a lie satan was quoting verbatim but the basis of that quotation was the bible called the entire process temptation and yet scripture was part of the tools that were used for that temptation so when satan tries lost or he tries stealing and you say no i am a child of god he tries church he tries a lot of other things too this is where the stamina that comes from the place of prayer and the ability to discern and perceive. If you are using physical results to gauge whether a thing is of God or of the devil, you will fall like a pack of cards. There are many good things that were designed to kill you. Sometimes Satan can use even compassion to destroy you. Is someone learning? He used Peter's compassion. What, did Pete, what was Peter's offense that Jesus rebuked Satan from him? Trying to refute him from going to the cross. That was compassion. And he said, get behind me, Satan. And Peter said, what did I do? He said, Peter, Satan has desired. It's not only evil. Remember, it was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They were all part of one tree. Good and evil come from one tree. The other tree is life. Not good, not evil. So be careful with good things. They are connected to the same tree. What Jesus came to give us is not good. He came to give us life. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. I hope it's Yahweh, Yahweh, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh. Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. He says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.